our program this week from Walt Disney's wonderful world of color, The Moon Cussers, part one, Graveyard of Ships. And now your host, Walt Disney. One of the most splendid of all sights is a big full moon. It can be seen from any place on Earth, and it's free. Now, you'd think that people everywhere would enjoy a bright, moonlit night. But during the middle 1800s, along the east coast of the United States, there was a bunch of cutthroats who didn't like the moon at all. In fact, they cussed it because it was bad for business. So they were called moon cussers. On this program, which is titled Graveyard of Ships, we're bringing you the first chapter of a two-part story about the shoreline pirates. But they sank a fleet of merchantmen with cutthroat treachery. The moon cussers cussed the moon when it was shining bright. Cause the moon cussers dirty work could only be done on a black and moonless night. Beacons on the shore, luring ships to grieve. Then took their plunder from the wrecks, abandoned on the reef. Wah, 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 wah. The moon cussers cussed the moon when it was shining bright. Cause the moon cussers dirty work could only be done on a black and Thank you. This 
is real beautiful, Miss Feather. <laughs> real genuine silk. I'll swap you the boat for that barrel of molasses. Now, Mr. Bose, don't you try to take advantage of me. Silk's nice, but a barrel of molasses is mighty valuable. <clears throat> well, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll give you the both parcels for that lasses. All right. It's a bargain. Put it down. All of you. That's my cargo. Now put it down. Go stick your head in the barrel of sand. You dirty sand pirates. You bring those things back. And you, madam, I'll take... <laughs> Poor fella, he don't realize how sick he is. <laughs> Are you the mate, sir? Just made your eyes hawk off the Jubilee. Or so I was. Till them dirty rotten moon castles beached us. And I'd give up all me hopes for the fiddler's green. If I could get me hands about them devil's throats. There's one good thing, sir. Mooncusters didn't get away with everything. Some of the stuff got away from them, washed up on shore. I lad. <laughs> a great comfort that must be to the captain. Like slipping out of the jaws of a shark to be gobbled up in the land crab. <laughs> now, lad, if you'll heist me up, hey? Yes, sir. <laughs> This way, sir. Got some more tea, Captain? On top light. All right, men. Now listen to me. We'll stay here until morning. Then you'll have to make your way back to New York the best way you can. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. You'll all be paid off in full at the home office of the Hallett Shipping Lines. That's all. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Old Hallett get one look either of us, wind up on a yard arm. More than 10 years, though. Maybe he wouldn't recognize us. He ain't gonna forget us, not in a hundred years. How do we get our pay? You just cut your jib. Leave me job the course. After all, Captain, you're not the first one to lose a ship to the moon cussers. I imagine they all felt just as bad as you do. Madam, nobody could feel as badly as I do. Unless they had to face old E.P. Hallett and tell him that they had just lost one of his ships. Your mate thought it was mod talk. Where were you, Captain Weeks? I, uh, I wasn't feeling well. Oh. All right. Go on, Captain. Now, oh, here's where the moon cussers set up their light. Somewhere in here. And here's where he turned and hit the reef. They took us over to a little place on the inlet, Feathers Wharf. That's almost the identical spot where we lost the Angie Olsen last spring. I can't believe it. All right. Let's talk to the mate. Get him in here. Uh, that's what I wanted to tell you. He's still down there at Feathers Wharf. He... He's still down there? No, Father. Uh, well, he didn't feel able to travel. He... Got, took quite a beating in the surf. He wanted to know if you would send his pay down there to him. Work all your life. Try to build up something. 
This is what comes of it. Who was your mate? Urias Hawk. Signed him on in Charleston, along with this friend of his, Bill Stacy. They're both down there together at Feathers Wharf. All right, go fill out your report. Yes, sir. Captain Weeks. Captain Town. Dan? I hate to welcome you home with news like this. But you might as well know the whole situation. It's incredible. There's one thing more. The Portland is a sea bound from the Indies for New London. If she winds up in that graveyard, we'll be wiped out. Finished. Bankrupt. That's a fine situation. Pirates right on our own coast. Why isn't something done? It's up to us, Dan. Us? I want you to go down there to this Feathers Wharf. Nose around and find out who these pirates are. Me, hey, Dad, I'm sailing Monday. You're not sailing. You're riding. And the sooner you get started, the better. And if the Portland passes that point at night, you make sure there's no signal light to pile her up on that reef. Well, what's the matter with the law? Surely the government can do something to stop them. Dan, we've begged, we've pleaded. They say it would take the entire militia. And even then, there'd be whole areas that they... We can't wait, Dan. You've got to go down there and protect our interests. Guess we're not left with much choice. in them days, me lad. For well, you had me own ship. Gee, willikers. And I'll have me own ship again one day. You can mark me word on that. You like to send on, lad? If I was to need a cabin boy, hey? Oh, yes, sir. I'd like that more than anything else in the whole world. Of course, Mom might not let me go till I get a little older. And I've been three times across and once gone on before I was the size of you. I guess it's because all the shipwrecks along here and everything, and the moon cutters. It's got my kind of scared. How many ships been lost? Rockaway to Montauk, eh? I don't rightly know, but I heard Mr. Henry say that moon cutters got off with a million dollars worth of cargo in the last six months. Captain? Captain? Why don't you go, lad? See who he is, what he wants, eh? Yes, sir. I'll sure be glad if they ever send our pay so that we can get out of here. You cannot listen to the lad. The moon castles have grabbed up a million dollars worth of cargo in the past six months. And I'm thinking to myself, why should we run off from an opportunity like that, eh? You mean an opportunity. I thought that... I? Unless you can think of some quicker way to make a fortune, eh? <laughs> Morning, sir. Morning, young man. You looking for somebody? This building with a sign on it. Wouldn't by any chance be Feathers Nest in, would it? Yes, sir. Sure, pretty horse. Want me to rub him down for you? Kind of a mean one. He bites. Oh. You don't suppose they'd have a room in there for me, do you? You gonna be staying here? Well, provided the quarters are adequate and food is tolerable. There are other guests, I presume. There's Bill Stacy and Mr. Hawk. They're both off in the Jubilee that went down. There they are. Maybe I better talk to them first and see how they like the food. My mom's the best cook in Long Island. <laughs> Mr. Hawk! You're not mean, are you? You don't even got a mean bone in your whole body. My, it's an awful lot of horse there. <laughs> My, he's a mean-looking critter. <laughs> oh! 
You get around a good, smart horse, and you gotta watch out what you say. You better watch out for him yourself. I'll have nothing to do with that black devil. Nothing to do with him at all. Good idea. I have a bit of a horse in my life. That's all right, fella. And here's the money he had coming. Oh, thanks, Mr. Hallett. Sure needed this. And your pa. <laughs> He'll be coming along, too? I'm down here by myself. But I'll give you my word on one thing, Mr. Hawk. You're going to see some of those moon cussers hanging from a yard arm before another moon rolls around. Well, uh, he ain't easy finding out who they are. But I figure they haven't had time to get rid of the cargo from the Jubilee. Now, we find out where they've hidden that. We're going to catch them in their own trap. Hi, lad. <laughs> I see your point. <laughs> So far as I'm concerned, everybody's under suspicion, except you two, of course. That's why I don't want anybody to know who I am or what I'm doing here. You can depend on us. We'll not tell. I'm going to ask you to stay around for another week or so. You'll still be on the payroll. Uh, what would you be expecting us to do? We have the Portland coming up the coast. It's going to be up to us to see if the moon cusses don't get her on the reef. Whatever you want us to do, just leave us know. Thanks. <laughs> I'll see you later and tell you exactly what I want you to do. We better find out who the moon cousins are before he does. If we're gonna join them, we got to find them, eh? He ain't gonna do us no good. I'd say get rid of him. Eh, he ain't no frost spider. He's E.P. Hallett's son. Bash in his head, they turned this here beach upside down. Both of us be hanging by our thumbs of what they got through. A million dollars in six months. With that kind of bait floating around, I wonder if they ain't some of our old friends. What smelled it ahead of us? Now that's a sight I never expected to see. Sure is a good horse. You know, there's only three people in the world Ebony's ever warmed up to? My father, me, now you. Gosh, is that his name, Ebony? Yep. That's a funny name for a horse. Ebony. We call her Satorius. Wait a minute. Unusual organ you have here. Had it long? Oh, this come off the Angie Olsen when she went down last spring. This off the Angie Olsen too? No, that come off the Briscoe when she went down three years ago Christmas. Must have been quite a Christmas. Never was a Christmas like that. Two whole crates of oranges. Ma just let me help myself. Didn't even have to ask. And there was coffee and corned beef and all sorts of materials for making shirts and dresses. Of course, not silk, though. Nothing like a good shipwreck to spread prosperity. Must be a lot of other things you have around. Oh, I guess me and Ma and Betsy is just about as good as anybody when it comes to hooking stuff out of the water. I bet nobody on the beach has any more nice things than you have. Probably you're the first ones there, huh? When a ship goes aground. Oh, take like the wine lady. When she went down, wasn't nobody there ahead of us. Pa was the first one that seen her. He come a-running up the beach, a-hollering and a-screaming. Carrying a big light, was he? Well, I don't know about that. It was a long time ago. I guess I really don't remember. I just hear Ma talk about it. Young man, if you have questions to ask, I think you might bypass children and talk to grown-ups. Well, actually, I... As for the night the Hawaiian lady went down, I happen to remember that night very well. All right, I'll give you a question. Did the captain say anything about the moon cussers luring him off course? The captain went down with his ship. I don't suppose that spoils the fun, though, does it? A few bodies floating around while you're grabbing up everything you can get your hands on and dragging it home. Get out! Get out! What was on the Hawaiian lady? Why are you all so touchy about it? Something you've got to keep hidden?
sure been down here all right. Shh. your hands and come out wherever you are. I've got a gun and I know how to use it. Anyhow, you didn't have to throw so hard. <clears throat> Look, I'm no burglar. You can ask Mr. Hawk and Mr. Stacy. They'll vouch for me. Then what was you doing in our cellar? I might as well tell you, I guess. I'm Dan Hallett of Hallett Shipping Lines. We've lost two of our ships here, not more than a few months apart. First it was the Angie Olsen and now the Jubilee. Go on. Well, I'm down here to dig out the men responsible for it and see that it doesn't happen again. And you expected to find these men down in our cellar? Well, no. I was looking for salvage cargo. Figured something like that. Questions you were asking Jonathan this morning. Might as well give him back his gun. Don't you think I had a right to be a little suspicious? Suspicious? All these things, some off our own ships, just conveniently washed in by the tide. The sea is likened unto the Lord, Mr. Hallett. It giveth and it taketh away. Better stir up the fire, Jonathan. I'll put the coffee pot on. Sorry I hit you so hard. Don't leave it there. It feels good. It giveth and it taketh away. The trouble is it giveth to the moon cussers and those who grab up the salvage. And it taketh away from those who own the ships. That's not always true, Mr. Hallett. My father gave up his life trying to get a line out to the Hawaiian lady to help her passengers to shore. I know it doesn't mean much to tell you that I'm sorry. That's all right. You didn't know. We have a lot of rooms here. I think you just better spend the night. That's what I came for earlier, to see about a place to stay. Somebody ordered me off the premises. 
Jonathan will bring you some coffee. In your room. Would be a blessing when I get me next ship to have a cabin boy as quick and as smart as you appears to be. And I'm a pretty good worker, too, sir. Yeah, and with a quick eye, I'll wager. Not a lad to forget things right off, eh? No, sir, not at all. I'll give you a little test. Do you recall ever seeing in these parts a man with his left ear gone and the scar clean across his left cheek, eh? No, sir, and I'm sure I wouldn't forget that. Hmm. How's about a man with a crippled hand and he sort of drags one foot when he walks, eh? No, sir, there's no one around here like that. Not that I've ever seen. Do you recall a big fat man with a tattoo of a serpent's head on his hand? Oh, you mean Mr. Wick that rents a fishery. Now let's see how observing you are. Did you ever notice anything peculiar about his mouth? Oh, you mean all the silver teeth? Aye, aye, you're a good, smart lad with a good eye and a good brain in your head. I know quite a bit about ships, too. Do you think you could take a message to this here Mr. Wick? Tell him there's an old friend who'd like very much to see him. Yes, sir. You might just show him this. In case uh, he don't recollect the name. Gee, Willikers. Take care you don't lose it, eh? Yes, sir. I'll finish with you when I get back. Just be patient. Sure sounds like old Pinch got it. Yeah, with maybe some of our other friends off in the Julia, eh? <laughs> You know what I'm here for? Uh, to stop the moon cussers and put an end to all that thieving piracy. Yes, sir. And I'll be out most every night riding the beach, watching for a signal light. I'll have to catch a little sleep each day, so I want to ask you something, Jonathan. Sure, go ahead. How would you like to work for me? Do on what? Well, if you should happen to see anything suspicious, just let me know. And most of all, I'd like to know if the Portland passes safely in daylight. Well, sure, if I happen to see anything, I'll let you know. And? I figure as long as you're going to be my partner, there may be times when you're going to want a good fast horse. You better practice riding ebony. You mean it? Really? Let me ride him down the fishery. I have to run an errand. Please? Sure, go ahead. Gee Willikers! Thanks! Oh, well, I better get started. I'll help you. Come on, Ebony. Dan's gonna let me ride you. Come on, boy. just yesterday. Uh, them was the good old days. Uh, my own ship, and as hardy a crew of cutthroats as ever scrambled for gold. Hmm? Do seem like you'd be a mite more happy about meeting your old shipmates after all these years, eh? Well, I am. I'm happy. Uh, I give you credit. And I've said it before. You always was more smart than you was likable. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. 
What's the things you need to operate these moon castles, eh? Small boats, so you can get out to a sinking ship and rip off the cargo before she goes under. You need a warehouse to store goods in till you got a buyer. You need some excuse to be a shipping staff out, eh? You're just imagining things. Who's going to be asking questions if you ships out barrels and cakes from a fishery? Eh? You got the boats? You got the warehouse? Well, I'm an honest man now. I... What is it you want? It ain't the question of what we want, Mr. Wig. We are old friends. Hmm. We come along to help you. I, I can imagine. It ain't like we was joining up without nothing to contribute. Any kind of luck at all, we can pick off the Portland. Full cargo from the Indies. We got inside information. This isn't gonna be like it was before, though. I want that understood. I'm in charge now. I'm giving the orders. Hey, we agrees to that, right? You give the orders. But I tell you what orders to give, hey? things to do than to watch for ships. Say, don't that young Hallett ever ride that black devil no more? He had to go into Sag Harbor today. Took the stage. Hmm, it seems every time I look up in the last few days, I see you gallivanting down to the beach on that horse. Mr. Most? Yeah? You ain't got any idea who any of the moon cussers are, do you? See here, young man. I don't know nothing, and I don't want to know nothing. How do you figure they set up their life? Make it blink. Now, you listen, Jonathan Feather. It ain't healthy for you to go around asking questions like that. Now, you forget about it. You hear me? Well, what could it hurt? Just asking you. Do you recollect that young Dave Kelp? Well, he was around here asking questions, and I told him the same as I'm telling you. But he wouldn't listen. Torn two days later, they found his body floating in the surf. Well, I guess I better be getting on. Mark what I told you. anything in sag? Wheeling ships in and out. Men in town today, gone tomorrow. There's no way to check on all of them. Send Stacy down to a Chinnacock. Just see if he could learn anything. You're late. I kept your supper warm on the back of the stove. I didn't see Ebony. Isn't Jonathan back yet? Oh, well, Jonathan's been here a couple times, but he left again when he found you weren't here. I suppose he didn't see any sign of Portland today. I'm sure he would have said something. She isn't here by now, I don't know. Surely can't be much longer. Soup's getting cold. Gee, money willikers. Moon cussers. Come on, boy.
Mr. Hawk, grab a horse. Mose, Henry, you men, come on. Wait for me! I gotta get Sertorius! Gentlemen, stay here. Liable to be bullets flying. I'll meet you down the beach just in case there's a ship aground. Mr. Mose, you gotta help him. There's only two of them against all those moon cussers. Now, if they want to go and have themselves shot full of holes, that's up to them, not me. Come as fast as you can. Come on, Sir Torres, you can go faster than that. scrambles aboard and listen then takes too long. Hey? Okay? If when I try to teach you, you ain't smart enough to learn. Might seem a bit odd, huh? We leave together, but I can't spec Hale and Hardy when they find his body in the sun. Get going now before he comes to and sees you. I don't understand what you have in mind. Ain't nobody going to ask me questions. Even when he comes to, the lad finds me tied up alongside him. I don't like it. Every time we try to get too smart, if we If there's want... any little thing goes wrong, we can take care of him good as you. the reef as pretty as you please. Before the night's over. But they didn't put worries with them poor folks out there and that their ship. Uh, there could be women and children aboard. Aye. And he keeps thinking to himself, if I must still lose, there's maybe something I could do to douse the fire before she goes aground. You did your best. Nobody can do more than that. Maybe. 
I don't care so much what you does to me, but if you was to let young Hollett go, I'm sure his pa would make it up to you. You shut up or I'll bash your brains in. Why'd you shoot him? They're the moon cousin devils. Wish I could do that to the lot of them.
Mr. Moss? Sure, poor son. Your move, Mr. Henry. Sure was brave of you, Mr. Hawk. That's right off when you'd seen that the moon cussers had jumped down. Well, I can tell you truthful, lad. It seemed like the right thing to do at the time. Suppose now that the Portland's safe, you'll be leaving us. The only thing is, I got a letter from my father. He's on his way down here. He should arrive tomorrow. I guess I better wait till he gets here. Now, don't you mention Mr. Hawk. I want it to be a surprise. I'm sure my father will want to give him some kind of reward. No matter what your pa does for him, Mr. Hawk sure deserves it. <laughs> Along the East Coast, piracy had reached the point where merchant shipping could not survive unless the bloodthirsty band was broken up. And all this adds up to an exciting climax next week when we bring you the final chapter in our adventure with the Moon Cussers. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah, the Moon Cussers cussed the moon when it was shining bright Cause the Moon Cussers dirty work could only be done on a black and moonless dark. Confound it, Senator. If these moon cusses operated out of some foreign port, and sank American ships, you'd waste no time at all. You'd declare a state of war. Catherine K., small two-sticker. But she's carrying an uncommon amount of gold. Lesson she's dragging lead, she ought to be here for daylight. With time running out, the moon cussers begin a desperate campaign to control coastal shipping lanes. <laughs> And Jonathan discovers he has entered into a race for his life. I guess I better be going now. I told you. Oh, no, you don't. He knows. And if he don't, you're going to make sure of it. Mr. Henry, most quick, round up everybody you can get. It's Jonathan, isn't it? The moon cussers got him. We can divide fast and scatter fast, because we'll never have another chance after tonight. What about him? Well, we shouldn't try to be too smart this time. Just throw him in the drink. Wire's coming. Down the beach, we'll pick up a hundred of them riding like crazy. Close that door! Put boxes in front of it! Barricade the windows! Get to your guns! Be part of the enemy! miss all the excitement when the moon cussers really find something to cuss about. Next week, in the action-packed conclusion of The Moon Cussers on Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color. This week, from Walt Disney's Wonderful World of Color, part two of The Moon Cussers. This episode, Wake of Disaster. And now your host, Walt Disney. Almost everybody tends to think of a pirate as a swashbuckling scoundrel with a cutlass on his hip, a patch on his eye, and larceny on his mind. And that's a pretty good description of an all-around general-purpose pirate, the kind who used to prowl on the high seas flying the Jolly Roger looking for merchant ships to plunder. But there were other kinds of pirates in the good old days. Cutthroats who lived on the shore and let the merchant vessels come to them to be looted. They were called moon cussers. And last week, we saw how they got that name. Pirate.
Merchants on the land no longer sail the sea. But they sank a fleet of merchant men with cutthroat treachery. and moonless night. They lit false beacons on the shore, luring ships to grieve. Then took their plunder from the wrecks, abandoned on the Beach does. All right, men. Now listen to me. Uh, we'll stay here until morning. Then you'll have to make your way back to New York the best way you can. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right, all right. You'll all be paid off in full at the home office of the Hallett Shipping Line. That's all. What are we gonna do? <laughs> Old Hallett, get one look guys that have us wind up on a yard top. In 10 years, though. Maybe you wouldn't recognize us. He ain't gonna forget us, not in a hundred years. How do we get our pay? You just cut your chair. Leave me chart the course. After all, Captain, you're not the first one to lose a ship to the moon cussers. I imagine they all felt just as bad as you do. Madam, nobody could feel as badly as I do. Unless... They had to face old E.P. Hallett and tell him that they had just lost one of his ships. Your mate thought it was Martin Talk. What? Where were you, Captain Weeks? I, uh, I wasn't feeling well. Oh. All right, let's talk to the mate. Get him in here. He's still down there at Feathers Wharf. He... He's still down there. No, Father. Well, he didn't feel able to travel. He got took quite a beating in the surf. He wanted to know if you would send his pay down there to him. Work all your life. Try to build up something. This is what comes of it. Who was your mate? Urias Hawk. 
Signed him on in Charleston along with this friend of his, Bill Stacy. They're both down there together at Feathers Wharf. Do you seem like you'd be a mite more happy about meeting your old shipmates after all these years, eh? Well, I am. I'm happy. I uh, give you credit. And I've said it before. You're always most more smart than you was likable. Well, I don't know what you're talking about. What's the things you need to operate these moon castles, eh? Small boats, so you can get out to a sinking ship and drip off the cargo before she goes under. You're just imagining things. Who's going to be asking questions if you ship out barrels and cakes from a fishery? Eh? You got the boats? You got the warehouse? Well, I'm an honest man now. I... What is it you want? It ain't the question of what we want, Mr. Wick. We are old friends. We come along to help you. I, I can imagine. It ain't like we was joining up without nothing to contribute. Any kind of luck at all, we can pick off the Portland. Full cargo from the Indies. We got inside information. This isn't going to be like it was before, though. I want that understood. I'm in charge now. I'm giving the orders. Uh, we agree to that, right? You give the orders. When I tell you what orders to give, eh? Confound it, Senator. If these moon cusses operated out of some foreign port and sank American ships, you'd waste no time at all. You'd declare a state of war. That's not the point. Just because it's right here in our own backyard, you seem to think it's not important. Perhaps if you'd be a little more factual. All right. Would you come with me, please? Here's where our ships head toward Long Island Sound. On a dark night out here, they start watching for Montauk light so they can round it here. But here's where the moon cussers set up their false light. And a captain, if he's fooled, heads in here. Ships are wrecked, lives are lost. Usually they wait for the crew to abandon ship, but they have been known to clamber aboard and fight it out. Well, Senator? Uh, trouble is, anything like this, when it requires an appropriation, it, uh, it takes time. Time. Well, we haven't got time. My son is down there right now, doing what he can. Trying to see that we don't lose another ship and drive our company into bankruptcy. Oh, now, Mr. Hallett, we'll proceed as rapidly as we can. I'll tell you one thing, gentlemen. I'm getting mighty tired of just sitting here and doing nothing but talk. Now, Senator. Good night, gentlemen. Steady, Abedin. Steady, boy. Come over here, boy. <laughs> What are you doing? That's no horse for a boy to be riding. Gee, Willikers, you must be Dan's pa, huh? Mm -hmm. He told me there was just three people in the whole world Ebony liked. Him, his pa, and me. Dan knows you're riding him? Sure, me and Dan's partners. Did you hear about the Portland? She's already come up the coast? Yep, Moon Cusser's almost got her, too. Except for me and Dan and Mr. Hawk. She's all right, then, huh? Probably cleaning the New London by now. Come by here last night. And you helped, you say, boy, huh? Well, you, uh, you'll have to tell me all about that. Hey, what's your name, son? Jonathan Feather. Feather, hmm? Must be who Feather's Wash named for, right? Not me, sir. My pa. No. Oh. <laughs> all right, you lead the way, Jonathan. Yes, sir. Betsy? Hello, Dan. Dan, Mr. Hawk. 
Mr. Hallett. Stacy. Captain. Morning. <laughs> Miss Betsy. How are you today? Fine, thank you. Morning, Mr. Mullen. Dan back yet? I guess so and go inside. This here's Dan's pa. How do you do, sir? How are you? Oh, D.B. Hallett. Thank you. Sounds like you got a weasel in your hen house. Gotta go take a look. We ain't never had no weasels around here. Not that I've ever seen. Dad, got good news. I heard all about it. Young Jonathan there told me. Son? I checked with the sheriff. They got a real good chance now of finding out who the moon cussers are, following up the three men who got killed last night. Dan? I won't be satisfied till I see every last one of them hanging from a yard arm. What have you found out so far? Well, one of them's off a whaler. The other two are itinerant workers at the fishery. Now, first thing I do, I want to say my thanks to Mr. Hulk for helping to save the Portland. He's, uh, he's still around, isn't he? Well, he and Stacy went out just a minute ago. They probably went down the beach. Well, I'll go find him if you want. You do that, will you, lad? Mr. Hart! Mr. Stacy! Coming in here to see ya! Mr. Hart! Mr. Stacy! There's one thing sure, the way these mooncusters operate, the way they handle their small boats and board a ship that's breaking up. They gotta be real seamen. Hmm, that sounds reasonable. So as soon as I get back to New York, I'm gonna dig through the records and see what I can find out on some of them. Well, I better do that for you, because you're not going right back to New York. What? You see, a group of us got together, and we've come up with a scheme that's gonna put those mooncusters right out of business. That's what I want to talk to you about. I called you together because we got trouble. Real trouble. Old E.P. Hallett arrived today. That could be embarrassing to quite a few of our group. What about old man Hallett? I don't know what you're getting at. Old E.P. Hallett, but... A few years back, some of us tries to take one of old Hallett's ships. He catched us at it and drove us off. <laughs> and he ain't one to forget. <laughs> There's gonna be more snooping around, more questions asked. And I say let's quit while we're ahead, pack up and get out of here. That's right. right. If old Pinchgard here ever could afford as good as he can run, he would have been bigger than Captain Kidd, eh? <laughs> I don't know, though. There ain't no sense to wait around here till he come and catch us. Somebody's coming! Somebody's coming! Someone's coming! Probably the sheriff. Anybody with him? There's two men on horses. All of you, get out of sight. There's we on found here. Now you go back out there, and you act natural, and if he wants you, bring him in here. Stay hidden. Watch out in case there's trouble. Get down! Mr. Hawk. You 
must have got the same idea I did, eh? Trying to find out something. Where them two moon casas worked, eh? <laughs> My father was here. He wanted to see you. Thank you for your part in saving the Portland. Was here? Has he left? He's got a lot of things to do. Uh, would have liked to meet you, Pa, but of course I'm not the one what needs to be thanked for doing me simple Christian duty. <laughs> <laughs> Come on in. I've been talking to people up and down the beach, trying to get their cooperation in a program set up by the ship owners and underwriters. Well, uh, uh, what uh, kind of a program? They're going to set up a string of life-saving stations not more than 10 miles apart all along the shore. Oh, like they got in Blighty, eh? Well, there's a little more to it than that, Mr. Hawk. Just leave it alone, boy. You might hurt yourself. There'll be lights atop these stations so that no ship's captain or crew can ever again mistake the shore for the entrance to the sound. And in case a ship does head in, there'll be flares that could be sent up to warn her off. But once these stations are built, there'll be nowhere for the moon cussers ever to wreck another ship. Aye, aye. Make the sea safe, honest seafaring man. Well, any proper man would be pleased to help with that, eh? Can we count on your help, Mr. Wick? Money, manpower, anything you need, you just come to me and... Fine. Come on, Jonathan. Meet me later at the cove. Now, we waited long enough. You men take whatever cash you've got and scatter. I'm going to try to sell the fishery. You have to be careful. Too many people asking questions. Hey, Wick. It's Hawk and Stacy. Anything I ever said again, old E.P. Hallett, I take it all back. He leaves orders for Dan to stay and see that the station is built proper. And when she's done, I'm the one what's to be left in charge, while old E.P. pays me salary out in his own pocket. <laughs> it's my reward for helping to save the Portland. <laughs> you end up with a job, but what about us? Don't you realize what it means building that station? Aye, and don't you realize what it means with me left in charge? We can get us one more ship before we scatter to the four winds. One more ship? Aye! But if we get in daily reports, we can pick and choose. Make sure we get the richest prize of all! <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, my dear. And with the violence of the elements, combined with the treachery of men who deliberately wreck our ships, We've lost as many as 1,500 men in a single year along our sea coast. But that era is ending now, thanks to the establishment of stations such as this and contributions of people like you. There's one thing more you need, and that's a messenger and an official helper for the new station. So I'll tell you what they did in Fire Island. They held a drawing. Now, all boys interested, put their names on a slip of paper. Excuse me, Mrs. Feather. I don't need no help except you. Come on, boys, don't cry. Don't cry in. I'll get you a piece of paper. Hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Hurry up. Could I have a piece of paper, please, Mr. Wick? Thank you. Oh, excuse me, Mr. Hawk. Just a minute, Commissioner. Can I speak to you? Of course. I hadn't mentioned this even to Hawk, but I want to put Jonathan Feather on as a messenger and official helper. Dan, you can't do that. Just make up your own mind. He's a good boy. I know he can be trusted. And besides, I'm not quite satisfied but with... all these people, they helped to put up the station. You can't just shut them out of it. No, Dan, I'm sorry. Well, one thing I sure don't need. Some young swamp underfoot, ready to blow the gaff every time he hears something. Maybe I can handle the drawing. Draw Willie's name. Are there any other boys who don't have a piece of paper? All right, boys, come on, hurry up. Write your names so we can put them in Mr. Henry's hat. And we can have a drawing. Wait. Folks, what we need is a messenger who can cover the most ground in the least possible time, right? 
Could be a matter of life or death. So why wouldn't it be better and a lot more fun to have a race? All right, we'll work it out. Let's have some men over here lay out a course and serve as judges. Go get your horses, boys. Commissioner, I'd like to volunteer my services. Well, thank you, Mr. Webb. Me too. Jonathan, where's Mr. Hawk? The last time I saw him, he was with Mr. Wick. I'm beginning to wonder. Jonathan, you got to get in there and win that race. On Sertorius? No, on Ebony. Yippee! Only one will give me any trouble. Jonathan Feathers, if he rides that black. Hey, fellas, you might as well go home. Me and Ebony will be there and back before you even get started. One thing I tell you, you win that race. Jonathan, you gotta win that race. It's important. I'm depending on you. You don't have to worry none. I'll make you an offer. Something I've been thinking about anyhow. You win that race, and Ebony's all yours to keep. You mean it? For really? Gee willikers. Come on, boy. to Beckett Point. Then cut inland till you come to the fork in the road that leads to Feather's Nest. Know the one I mean? Yes, sir. All right, take that fork and head for the inn. Mr. Wick will be there. Give each of you a silver dollar. Soon as you get it, ride back here. Mister, do we take the same way back? <laughs> Son, you just come back the fastest way you know how. Soon as you reach me, dismount, run to the bell and ring it. First boy to ring the bell, or collect the dollars from the others. Be allowed to keep them. Jonathan! You better not win or I'll bash your head in. How are you gonna do that if you can't catch me? All right now, boys, let's have a good race. Are you ready? Let's go! <laughs> Give me another. 
You find it. You dropped it. No, he didn't. You did. You dropped the dollar on purpose. I saw you. Now, Miss Betsy. Betsy, please help me find the dollar I needed to win the race. Betsy, it fell right in here someplace. Here you are. Now go on, go on, Willie. Win that race. Oh, Betsy, we gotta find it. I'm trying, Jonathan. Show that there's no hard feelings, Miss Betsy. I'll help you find it. Here it is, Jonathan. Give me a boost, Betsy. There you go, Jonathan. I know Hurry, you have your ring. Here it is. Come on, Jonathan. Yeah! You mean old. yourself a dollar from the other two riders because we're going to send you on your first official trip. Come on, Willie. Here, Mom. <laughs> All right, Jonathan, Jonathan. Each day, you're to ride into Fordham's Tavern, pick up a sealed envelope left there by the stage from New York. That's the latest shipping reports. Ships and cargoes. Now, I don't need to tell you what might happen if it fell into the wrong hands. Moon cusses, for example. So you guard it carefully, bring it here to the station, give it to Mr. Hawk. Nobody else, understand? Yes, sir. Hey, Dan! Is Ebony really all mine now? He's all yours, Jonathan. Oh. Well, I guess I better get going. Bye. Bye. Dan, pleasure to see you again. Me too, Commissioner. Thank you.
expected to pass tonight? There's our chance. I could round up the men, get them down to the cove. Clouds are moving in real good. We can... Aye. Good dark night. Might have a chance to catch some moon castles, eh? Wow. I guess I better be going now. I told you... Oh, no, you don't. He knows. And if he don't, you're gonna make sure of it. Are you, Mr. Hawk? It wasn't my idea, laddie, to have you mixed up in this. Be a lot better for everybody if you hadn't won that blinking race, eh? Yeah. We were making this for you. Here, take it, laddie. Messenger. I'm not going to have him miss his meals. Probably the stagecoach was late. Maybe. Wait a minute, please. I want to get to the bottom of this. Are you sure Mr. Wick dropped the dollar on purpose? It wasn't Jonathan. It don't matter. Jonathan won anyhow. Mrs. Feather, it does matter. There's something here, and I want to get to the bottom of it. Betsy? All right. There's no question. Mr. Wick did everything he possibly could to keep Jonathan from winning. You said Mr. Wick arrived about three years ago and took over the fishery. Is that about the time of the first moon cusser activity? I don't know. I didn't pay much attention. Ain't none of my business. Nor yours either, Betsy. Why don't you tell him? You know as well as anybody. Mr. Wick arrived here and the moon cussing activity started. All about the same time. Everybody knows it. And everybody's afraid to talk. Uh, so much for Mr. Wick. Now there's a few things I'd like Mr. Hawk to explain. Bring the boy out. There now at the fishery until we get there.
got to see Dan. It's important. Dan rode down to the life-saving station, Mr. Hallett. Oh, of all times not to be here. You're Mr. Wick, the man who runs the fishery. He's a fugitive, convicted of piracy. Dan wanted me to check on that. Mr. Henry, Moss, quick, round up everybody you can get. Dan, glad you're here. I want to finish my soup. What incarnation's the matter? It's Jonathan, isn't it? The mooncuster's got him. Hurry! Now, he'll be all right. We'll get him back. It's not quite as bad as it sounds. Oh, you're hurt. Why, Mr. Hallett, what a nice approach. What's the matter? Everything is all right, Mrs. Feather. There's nothing to worry about. Something's happened to Jonathan. Now, Mother, what is it? Tell me. He's going to be all right, I promise you. Never figured we'd have to move so fast. Would I rather come at it more cautious like? But there's one thing I've learned in my years to smell trouble brewing. Dan Hallett knew what he was doing, rigging that race this afternoon to make sure of putting Young Feather here in his messenger to keep an eye on things. Catherine Kay, small two sticker. But she's carrying an uncommon amount of gold. Lesson she's dragging lead, she ought to be here for dinner. We can divide fast and scatter fast, because we'll never have another chance after tonight. What about him? Well, we shouldn't try to be too smart this time. Just throw him in the drink. When I leaves, I take the lad with me. Slip him aboard a whaler that's moving out to sea. If he talks, we all hang. He'll be to sea for six months. Time he gets back, devil himself shouldn't find none of us. <laughs> well, he ruined it for us the last time. Upset the fire barrel and put out the light. I don't think we should give him another chance like that. I still got bruises where he butts me like a billy goat. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, let's get down to the cove. Get ready. You know what you have to do. Right down around the point, leave us know when you see, sir. Wait a minute. Some of the men were talking last night. They seem to think things went better when I was giving the orders. Too many things have gone wrong since you moved in and took over. Ah, if you'd ask me, I'd say there ain't nothing going right. Not so far. Whose side are you on? I'm with you. Oh, I'm with you. I happens to like the boy. And I plan to take care of him proper. And more than that, I've lived my whole life and never give in to a pack of filch rats like you. And I ain't starting now. He can't do much, only one shot. I can put the ball between your eyebrows, eh? But that does after that, you'll never live to find out. Well, it's your neck too, Hawk. Mr. Hawk, to the likes of you. Yeah. But if he should talk, you might hang with the rest of us. Well, what do you want to do? Talk here all night, or get the gold? Get the gold. Well, that's better. We leave the boy here tied up. Then after we split up the gold... Why does coming down the beach where we become a hundred of them riding like crazy? Who's that car? Put boxes in front of it! Barricade the windows! Get here, and Return the animal! If he wants to keep alive, lad, keep out of sight. Things come in to be trusted. Upstairs, take around back.
Sorry I couldn't make it for the dedication. At least you got here for the fun. No, I wouldn't have missed it for the world. <laughs> What's gonna happen to Mr. Hawk? He's a pirate. They'll hang him. No, he'll be given a fair trial. I have a feeling somehow he's gonna get himself appointed foreman of the jury. <laughs> Goodbye, Dan. Have a nice trip, Thank Dad. Thank you. See you back at the office. Bye, Betsy. Goodbye, Mr. Jonathan. Hall. Nice to have had Bye, you. Bye, Mr. Hall. Thank you for all Bye. your help. Come back and visit us. Thank you. Bye. What you staying around here for? Figure there's some more moon cussers around? Jonathan, the moon wasn't made just for cussing. As soon as we get back, I want you to come over to the station with me. Show me how you climbed up the outside. How about a race back to the barn? All right. On your mark? Get set. Go! They sure are mixed up. That ain't no shortcut. Come on, Ebony. Yeah. <laughs> 